Just JB here, so I'm going to present you with something very British and very old school today. Uh, this is from the early 80s and it didn't see much publicity outside the UK, but this is an awesome Acorn BBC emulator tutorial, which is Beebum. So for a little while now, I've got to do a microcomputer tutorial and I thought let's start with the very basics. So if I just go and type into my search engine Beebum, you'll come up with this website. So you've got two installation packages you can get. You can get either an installer or you can get a zip file where you extract all the contents into almost like a portable um, well, folder. So rather than installing it, you've just got the option to press an exe file to get your uh, Beebum emulator up and running. So for this tutorial, I'm going to just go for the installer by left-clicking on bboom418.exe. So uh, BBC Micro, in my opinion, is very underrated um, in the world of retro nowadays. Everything seems to be Sega, Nintendo, and uh, you know classic platforms such as the Acorn computers, the BBC, the Archimedes, uh, Spectrum, Amstrad. They seem a little bit left out. And I think that's really tragic since uh, the British computing industry in the early 80s was uh, somewhat really amazing and it set a milestone really for computing in the UK. So just wait for this one to install, rather just wait for this one to download, which is done. If I just double left click on this, just install this one to wherever you want. So I'm going to just default uh, install it to my C drive program files. And because I've already installed this before, I'm going to install it again just for you to help you out. Like I said, I think there's a lack of uh, interest, not interest so much, but a lack of videos um, You know, doing this type of thing in a real accessible way, or it could be me. So uh, next, then create a desktop shortcut. And I think uh, BBC has got this uh, stigma attached to it. It's like games are very hard to run, you know, that type of thing, but they're not actually that hard. To, to run if you look into it. Uh, so if you was at school in, you know, even the late 80s, early 90s, your uh, school might have had a BBC Micro uh, Model B. Uh, at my first junior school in Bristol, uh, we had a BBC Micro Model B. Um, and we used to play a game which accompanied a educational uh, Newcastle program called Georgie Racer. And we had the game on diskette which um, went alongside the program we had to watch every week. So that's pretty cool. So if you remember Georgie Racer, uh, comment and mention you remember it because it really was a cool program. So anyway, you open up Beebum. Let's start this again. I was just rambling on. So open up Beebum and you hear this awesome beep. Yeah, pretty cool. Very nostalgic stuff. So anyway, uh, the reason you're watching this video is to run the actual games. So with uh, Beebum, the accepted uh, files is going to be your SSDs, which is uh, diskette files. And I've also downloaded, uh, and I couldn't resist, Jet Set Willy, which is quite essentially British from that era. You're not going to get much more British than Jet Set Willy. Uh, so cassette files are known as .uef files so I'm going to just drag Jet Set Willy out onto my desktop so uh, let's start with the easiest way of loading games first so in a minute I'm going to show you where to get your games released and they're very easy to obtain so say you want to run a disk game which is the .ssd files um, just simply go up to file, if you go to run disk, just locate where your disk is, so in my case it's on my desktop, and there it is, so we got Citadel, which again, um, if you was a BBC owner in the 80s, especially early 80s, uh, Citadel was a highly regarded game, a bit like Elite I suppose. So double click on that and that's it, you're straight in. So uh, there's workarounds to use controllers, joysticks, joypads on Beebum, but most people back in the day from my understanding would use the keyboard. Uh, in the past when I've owned uh, BBC Micros, I've used the keyboards just because 
I don't know, I like that mechanical keyboards type feeling. So, if we go up to view, you're obviously got to want to view uh, this full screen or you could keep it minimized. So, simply just go up to view and you've got window sizes here. So, you can do this or if you want to, you can, whoops, you can just simply go up and select full screen. I'm going to just leave it like this for now and um, yes this looks very much like Teletext. Remember this is a very primitive computer system of the time. So let's just get this one running. So it runs just like the normal way of running this game on the real machine. So it gives you a bit of backstory. And if you heard that, it actually emulates the sound of the disc spinning. And if you're younger watching this video and you think this is pretty naff, trust me, that uh, speech to voice synthesizer just there was something very special this day. <laughs> So yeah, Teletext, uh, very stylish, but it's all good. So it's gonna lay out here uh, how to use the game, how to control it by keyboard. Uh, from understanding, uh, the keyboard emulated is very similar to the actual real machine mechanical keys. So uh, let's see, just select a layout. So I'm gonna go for one. Are you a male or female? Well, obviously I'm a female. You were a female, yes. And that's it, so it looks a bit stretched, um, but you know, this is just a tutorial, so. Here we go, so this is Citadel, and yeah, very basic, but there's something really nice about these sort of graphics to me. I've owned BBCs on and off over the years, and I'm outraged by how much they go for nowadays by scalpers on eBay. So, this is a disc game, as you can see, it's a very fast loader. So, let's show you how to load up a cassette game, which might don't some people, which have actually got to enter some commands in stillness. So, if we open up beep them again and hear that awesome beep uh, yes this program worked correctly just awesome uh, so if we want to load a cassette tape image if we go to file if you go to load tape and desk desktop which is where I put the UEF of Jet Set Willy just double left click on this and this is where you have to uh, type in some commands, which isn't a problem. So um, just keep your finger on shift and simultaneously press asterisk, which is number eight. And if you type in tape and then enter, and then C, H, dot, and then two quotation marks, enter, it then searches the tape of the data and if you want to speed this up, because this is literally emulating a cassette tape, uh, like the real thing, if you want to speed this up, you just go to speed. Go to fixed speed, and if you just say go to 100, there you go. So for those nostalgic uh, nerds out there, you might want to see the actual load in itself in real time. So in that case, just keep it on real time. So this is, uh, without a doubt, seizure material, so be careful. Uh, you know, these games, they just put a smile on my face, I love them. Now, I didn't, uh, don't know what the instructions are for uh, making uh, Willy jump, no idea, but... And I can't help but mention from the uh, docudrama, which was on TV years ago, Clive Sinclair saying, Jet Sack and Willy, just brilliant stuff. So anyway, that's about it for your cassette games and your disc games. Let me just show you some more features here. So if we close this down again. 
It's a really impressive emulator if you're into microcomputers like I am. Uh, you can do a lot of things with this. So if you go to disk options, you've got multiple disks for a game. There's uh, certain games out there. Uh, you'll have to put in disk one, disk zero, etc. that type of thing. You've also got write protection. So in the old days when media was a thing, you could sell a tape over a hall which would uh, make that disc recordable or even a tape recordable by putting some tape over it. Uh, you've got lots like I was saying, you've got the speed, um, you've got FPS you could change. Uh, like I said, the only thing which is a little bit odd with the BBC Micro is controllers. Uh, on most other emulators you can use any controller where you can throw it, but the BBC Micro, the BBM, is a little bit different. Um, I tried using my PS3 controller on this, but in all fairness, it don't really feel right, even if I could get that working. So anyway, let me just show you where you get the game. So on the actual Beebum website here, which I'm gonna link in the description, if you go to software at the top, uh, you still got games being uh, put together for this uh, computer nowadays, just like most other vintage retro, dare I say it, retro computers. Don't really like that words too much. Bit sold out words retro. Um, but if you go here, you will find a wealth of different games. So if we go to this link here, you'll find a lot of different games here. So you'll find, like I was just saying, you've got self-published games uh, by coders who's uh, actually uh, coded this game which came out this year. I just had a little go on that one. It seems to be uh, some type of Zelda clone uh, from what I gather. Uh, so you've got lots of different games and this website is so cool. So if you didn't want to install the emulator, if you go on to this uh, link I just showed you and just press play, it will actually do it for you. So you can play these games without installing. So that's up to you, but you get the gist. Pretty cool stuff. So most of those from that link I just showed you there are disk files by the scenes. So you get a lot of um, up-to-date games, like recent games or people's uh, put together. Or if you fancy some tape action, cassette tape action, go to Stairway to Hell. Uh, no idea why it's called Stairway to Hell, but this website looks somewhat like something from the early 2000s. I'm not sure why it's been updated, but it don't matter as long as it does the job. So you've got options there of disk images and tape images. So if we just go to tape images, if you do index by file name, you'll get pretty much the entire uh, cassette tape library of BBC micro games. So literally just left click on it, downloads, extract uh, the cassette image from the zip file and just load up as I've showed you in this video. Uh, I think that's about it for Beebum. But uh, yeah, remember, if you've got any memories of using one of these in school, uh, like I said, these were very, very expensive. There was a good few hundred pounds when they originally came out, and this was in the very early 1980s. Uh, but the BBC and Acorn got together to improve people's understanding and comprehension over computers, so schools started incorporating uh, BBC Micros into their curriculum to teach youngsters uh, programming. So, uh, you know, I'm sure most kids was really interested in typing out databases of those primitive days. But um, if you knew someone had a BBC Micro, they was literally from a very wealthy background. So I hear uh, most people in the UK at that time had a Spectrum or, like myself, a Commodore 64. So anyway, if you've got any comments or questions, feel free to ask and obviously like and subscribe.